Hello everyone and welcome to the class. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America and today we are going over all of the features that you can utilize in the text messaging app that comes with the iPhone or of course is also available on the iPad. Now this is the iOS 10 edition but we're going to be going over a lot of the features that have actually been around for a while for any of you who may have missed some of them. So we're not just going over new features today. Um, if you need uh, links to anything that we mentioned in the class, you'll find everything below in the notes section. Let's begin. The first feature we're going to be talking about is a feature that you are only going to find on the iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, 7, or 7 Plus, which is the Force Touch feature. So basically, when you're on your home screen, what you can do is Force Touch the app by pressing deeper into it. And you'll see, for example, in this case, I have Mark pop up anyone who you have recently corresponded with. And you can just go right into that conversation. Or if you prefer, you can create a brand new message. Let's just go into this one I have going with Mark. I will warn you right now, this is not take one of this class. So you're going to see a bunch of other stuff that's randomly there, including a spaceship. Uh, apparently from The Simpsons. So uh, the next feature that we're going to be talking about is an audio memo. This is a great feature. I tend to think, especially when you're driving, obviously you don't want to be typing and you don't want to be texting and driving. So this can be a great alternative. Also just kind of when you're in a rush and you don't want to type. So in order to do this, what you're going to do is go to that little microphone icon that you see here uh, on sort of towards the middle of my screen. And we're going to just press down on it. And as I press and hold it, you can see here it's recording what I am saying. So uh, this would be great if I'm telling Mark, hey, uh, I'm driving right now, I can't talk to you, uh, but I'll call you when I get home. Now when I'm ready to send him that message, I can just slide up and let go and it will send that audio message. Uh, okay, so it's a great little feature, like I said, especially for if you happen to be driving. The next few features that we're going to be talking about are located in the inspector. Now if you don't know what the inspector is, it's this little lowercase i icon that you'll see here at the top right corner of my screen. We're going to tap on that and it's going to go, it's going to go into the info. So for example here you can see uh, images including a lot of wacky ones that I have sent Mark. Uh, if I tab over to attachments, I can see that right there is the audio memo that I just sent him now. Okay, So any files that you've sent, you're going to see all the history there. One little trick I would like to share with all of you. If, uh, let's say you want, you don't want images that are there to pop up when you go into info, by simply deleting the entire text message conversation, those will wipe out, okay? So uh, it won't wipe out on the other person's end, but it will wipe it out on your end. So from here, a couple of the other things that you can do is you can send your current location. So what that's gonna do is it's just gonna read your GPS and it's gonna send a map basically to that person. It'll open up in the Apple Maps application and Mark can see where I am. The other option here is share my location. That's a great feature. Um, I tend to think especially for parents, uh, if you have you know kids who have a cell phone, this is a good feature for you to probably turn on for them. So what you do is you tap on share my location and what this will basically do is it, it works with the app called Find My Friends. So for example, I could even use Siri and I could say, Siri, where is Mark? Okay, and if he had done this to me, I can now see where he is. Again, just a great feature I tend to think especially for parents. The next feature that you'll see here right below is individual do not disturb. So what this means is that for this particular conversation, I can make it so that by turning this feature on, if I'm busy working on my phone, any messages that Mark sends me are not going to pop up on my phone. It's not going to ding. It's not going to do anything. Okay, for now I'm going to turn that feature off because we are going to be corresponding over the course of this class. The next one here is send read receipts. Once again, this is individual send read receipts. So what a read receipt is, is basically if you send me a message, when you open the message, I can see when you have read it, if you have en enabled that feature. With this, what I can do is by individual contact, I can basically make exceptions to the rule. So on my phone, I typically turn off read receipts. I don't necessarily want everyone to know when I've read their message. Um, another trick I would like to actually share with you about this particular feature. Uh, let's say you're on your phone and it just kind of pops up on the screen, but you don't actually tap into it. That does not count. So even if you have read receipts on, and even though you've seen what the person has sent you, they are not going to get that read receipt until you actually enter the conversation through the text messaging app. So with this feature, I can individually turn on or turn off that particular feature. The next feature are link previews. So for example, if I'm going to send Mark uh, a YouTube video, which I happen to conveniently have one uh, copied to my clipboard, okay, when I send him this video, check it out, no longer is it just a hyperlink, now it actually gives a preview of what it is, and in the case of a video, he can actually play the video right here within the text messaging app. He never has to leave and go to YouTube. So just kind of a cool little feature there. 
The next feature I'm going to show you is how to send an instant photo. Now, a lot of people I have found do not know this, but when you send an instant photo, it does not save that photo to the camera roll. That's a really good thing to be aware of for security reasons, I would tend to think. So let me give you an example. Let's say Mark and I are just chatting and he's like, hey, how are you doing? And maybe I just want to send him a photo of me just like freaking out, okay? I don't need to save that photo, right? I'm just trying to be silly and wacky with the guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on that little arrow icon that you see there, I'm going to tap on the camera. Now the first item that you see here, the first, the big box there, that is my live camera. If I do this right now, you should be able to see right there that that is live. I'm going to switch cameras here by tapping this right here. You'll see my incredibly amazing popcorn ceiling. Don't you just love those? And I'm just going to um, give Mark one of my famous faces. So I'm just going to go, ah! okay, and send it to him. Now, to prove to you that that, in fact, does work, I just want to go into the Photos app here. It's a terrible photo, okay? And if I go into camera roll, see from camera roll there, you can see from my previous take, but you can see that the most recent photo is not the one that I just sent him. So anything you send through the instant photo feature is not going to be saved. However, let's go back. If instead of doing that, if instead I go here and I swipe to the right, where we have the camera option, okay, now, that photo will be saved into, hello everyone, that feature will be saved into uh, the camera roll. The next feature that I'm going to show you is called tap back. This is sort of a little bit like liking someone's photo on Facebook, but now you can do it within text messages. So see uh, this amazing gif of dancing stormtroopers? Well, I actually sent that to Mark, but let's pretend that for this purpose, he sent it to me. What you can do is you can double tap on any text or photo and you get these little options here. So I can give it like a heart, a thumbs up, thumbs down, ha ha, exclamation mark, question mark. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit ha ha, and he'll see that now on his end. The next feature I wanna talk about is predictive text. Now this is a feature that has gotten progressively better and better over the years, and at this point, it's really, really, I'd say pretty good. So what this will basically do, it's a feature that runs in the background, but your iPhone is analyzing the text. So for example, if Mark were to ask me a question about what kind of cuisine do I want to get for dinner tonight, and it could be, the options are, uh, do you want to get Chinese or Japanese, okay? In predictive text, which is above the keyboard there, it would have as an option Chinese, Japanese, or most likely not sure. Usually they try to give you a third option there as well. So uh, in this case, I was just texting with Mark. Mark's busy right now, but this is still a good example to show it off. He's telling me that there's a client there. It's analyzing the text that he sent me, and I can just say, okay, talk later, or give a thumbs up, or say okay as an example. But basically, I just want to demonstrate there that the predictive text feature is actually very, very good. I've tried testing it when I'm writing an entire sentence, and I have found that it does a very, very good job. I can almost fill the entire response just through the predictive text that it places there. So it's a pretty cool feature. The next feature that we're going to be talking about is called Digital Touch. Now, this is the feature that was basically introduced on the Apple Watch and now has made its way to the iPhone as well as the iPad. To do this, we're going to tap on the little arrow icon that you see here to the left of where my cursor is, and we're going to go into that second option there. It's the uh, heart with the two fingers on it. So there's a, there's a couple of different things that you can do here. You can either just draw with your finger, so I can just kind of draw like that, okay? And you could actually write words if you want. If you do want to write words, though, I'd like to give you a little uh, piece of advice. It's very, very hard to write in that little teeny tiny square there. So by tapping on uh, the little arrow that you see there at the bottom right corner of my screen, that will basically give you access to the entire screen. So I can go here, I can pick my color, I can say, no prob. Little, there we go, and hit send. Okay, so now he'll get that and you'll see it actually draws it out for him as well. The other feature that you can do here within D Digital Touch, uh, there are actually little icons on the right-hand side that will give you a demonstration, but you can also send something like a heart, it's not your actual heartbeat. Um, you can send a broken heart, a fireball, for all those times that I can count on exactly no hands where a fireball is a correct response to a question, okay? Um, but hey, it's there if you want it. The next feature I would like to show you is how to mark up an image. This basically involves just drawing on top of a photo. So the first thing we need to do is we need to grab a photo. So let's uh, go here once again at that little arrow. Let's uh, grab the camera. Okay, you can see I actually already did this a moment ago. I've got my photo here. Now before you send it, what you're going to do is tap on the actual photo in the preview box here. 
And now from here, you'll see that there's a markup button at the bottom uh, left corner. We can tap on that and we get all of our tools so that we can draw on type of it. Uh, the uh, icon that you see there at the bottom right, that is so that you can add a text box if you prefer a text box over uh, just writing with your finger. Okay, and then you can hit save and send it to the person. That's how you mark up a photo. The next feature I'd like to show you is, uh, has become one of my favorite features. I admit it is cheesy as can be, but it is kind of cool, and there are some amazing apps that make it way better. So uh, for links to what I'm about to show you, go to the description of the video. They're a lot of fun. Um, so the next part are apps. There are now apps including stickers, but there are also app apps that work within the text messaging app itself. That was confusing, wasn't it? So I'd like to show you a couple of my favorites very, very quickly. Uh, like I said, if you would like to check them out, we'll give you links to all of them. So uh, let's say I want to be kind of a wise guy with Mark, okay? Uh, one of my favorite sticker apps is called JibJab. And basically what JibJab does is you take photos of yourself doing different expressions. Um, I can be at times a little bit expressive. Ah! Um, so you wanna take those photos of yourself and then you can bring them into these little GIF images. They're a blast, let's have fun with Mark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap on that little arrow icon and this time we're gonna go into the final item you see there, the app store icon. Okay, now there's a few here that actually do come with your iPhone. This first one right here uh, that you see on my screen, this one is just the GIF keyboard. So basically what I can do is I can type in here where it says find images. You can see some of the recent ones that I looked for. Uh, let's use the word uh, dance, okay? And I can pull up these little GIF images and send it to Mark, okay? So the Stormtrooper one that you saw earlier, you can see that's where I pulled that one there. Okay, let's hit cancel. So the other thing you'll notice is that if you look at the very, very bottom of my screen right now, you'll see those, there are those little dots right there. So what that indicates is that we have multiple pages of apps that we have access to. So if we go all the way to the left, okay, this is the same feature that you will get if you actually rotate your phone into landscape mode. Um, so you can uh, use one of these pre-written, handwritten uh, versions. If you do this uh, otherwise, you can just write by hand on your screen and send something. Personally, I don't find it to be a very useful feature. Maybe it's because I have the smaller iPhone, might be definitely a feature that some people on the bigger iPhones might enjoy better. But if I swipe here to the right, uh, this right here is the one I was talking about. This is JibJab. So I can, for example, go here into search, okay? And I can search for, uh, right now, we're right on the heels of Halloween. So let me tap on Halloween as an example, okay? And, oh my God, we have some great ones here. Um, and you can see it's taken my photo and it's put it into these various very cute little animations. Um, where's the one that I really loved? The one where I'm flashing every, oh, here we go. This is just great where I flash everyone with the uh, pumpkin boobs, very appropriate. So let's just tap on that one, okay? And so now it's inserted that and I can send that off to Mark. If you wanna learn more about that, link in the description. A Couple of the other ones that we have here though, Okay, there's the one we had before, Apple Music. So if you wanna send someone like a playlist or a song, you can send it now right through the text messaging app. Keep scrolling. This is another one that uh, I have to say that I'm a bit of a fan of, it's called Yarn. It's a free app, but there are add-ons that you can purchase within the app, um, but it is a pretty cute little app, I have to say. Scroll further, uh, this is another one, uh, I believe this one's called Emoji Me. We'll give you a link to that one as well, where you can basically take your face and turn yourself into an emoji doing different things like giving a thumbs up. So there's me giving a thumbs up, or at least the supposed to be me giving a thumbs up, just like that. Next thing I would like to do is show you if you want to remove these options, how you do that, how you reorder them and manage them. So what we're gonna do is from here, we're gonna go into the little icon that you see there at the bottom left corner. Okay, so let's go in there. These are the various apps that I have currently running within the text message program. If I want to reorder them, it works the exact same way that you would reorder an icon on your home screen. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna press and hold on any one of them. Just try not to digital, uh, to force touch it rather, uh, for those of you who have the, um, uh, the iPhone 6S or newer. And now I can move these around in whatever order I want. You can see how they're jiggling right there. Now, if there's a particular app here that you don't really care about, for example, um, I don't use Apple Music, so I have really no need to have it there. You can tap on the little X and it's gone, just like that. And if you want to find out where you can get more of these little apps, you can go right into the store. That's the little plus icon you see right there. Okay, once I get out of there. 
So that'll take you into the App Store where you can find uh, just a ton of these various apps. But like I said, if you want some of our favorites, you know where to go to get those. So I hope you've enjoyed this class here, folks. Um, the text messaging app, obviously one of the apps that we use the most here, and uh, we wanna make sure that you got the most of it. So uh, for those of you who have been playing with some of the new features that you will find in iOS 10, if you have a favorite stickers app or other app that works with text messages, leave us a note in the comment section below, leave us your thoughts, and we'll see you next time. Oh, one other thing. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you can find out whenever we come out with new classes, you can do so just by clicking the button next to me or you will find a link also in the description of the video. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed.